In our earlier recording, we have seen how to test for heteroscedasticity using LM test. Okay, uh, this was the LM test for heteroscedasticity. Uh, the there is another version of uh, not the another version. There is another test for heteroscedasticity, which is White's test for heteroscedasticity. The problem is that in the LM test, you have to assume uh, one the form of these uh, what 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 the error variance would take. One is that, and two that these z's have to be assumed what would be these variables these could be same as x's above which which have been taken up in the model or they could be different even but in the white's test of heteroscedasticity say for example you run the regression which is yt equals to beta 1 plus beta 2 xt2 plus beta 3 xt3 plus ut. Now suppose you have this model with you and you want to test for heteroscedasticity and you have to assume some form of the error variance you will say it is sigma square t would be alpha 1 plus alpha 2 xt2 plus alpha 3 xt3 so same variables from above then the square terms of these two variables xt2 square xt3 square and then the cross product term of these two variables which is xt2 xt3 okay now this is an auxiliary regression this one the sigma square t so have you seen this that the, the that the cross term and the square term of the variables are used okay so, and you'll be using the same variables xt2, xt3 as in the as in the original model and not some z's, okay? So, which are not there, which may or may not be there in the model. Now, what would be the heteroscedasticity? What would be the um, um, null hypothesis for, uh, for, for this no heteroscedasticity? In case my alpha 2 is 0, alpha 3 is 0, alpha 4 is 0, alpha 5 is 0, and alpha 6 is 0. So what would be left is just alpha 1. Sigma square t is equal to alpha 1. Sigma square t is equal to a constant, and that's what you want for homoscedasticity. Okay, so your null hypothesis is of homoscedasticity, you will assume that alpha 2 to alpha 3 <coughs> to alpha 4 and alpha 5 alpha 6 all of them they are equal to 0 and the alternative hypothesis is that at least one of them is not equal to 0 in case if at least one of them is not equal to 0 then this sigma square t is equal to alpha 1 plus something <clears throat> will not remain as a constant number so how do you go about this? Your first step would be <coughs> to run this regression, the original regression, and you get the values for beta 1 hat, beta 2 hat, and beta 3 hat, and you get u hat t from this regression. And you will have to superimpose this u hat t square instead of sigma square t because that's sigma square t is not a known variable. The only thing which you can get is sigma uh, u hat t square. So you'll be running a regression of then u hat t square against a constant xt2, xt3, xt square, xt3 square and x2, x3. And from that regression you'll be picking up r square <coughs> I'm sorry and uh, you'll be You'll be computing nr square, okay, r square from this auxiliary regression, nr square. This is your LM test statistic, LM test statistic, which is equal to nr square. And this will follow chi square with p minus 1 degrees of freedom. Fine. So, how many degrees of freedom? 5. Fine. Because 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is, in fact, you are, you are estimating 6 parameters, but you are keeping 1 out of it. So it is p minus 1. And you will check for chi square p minus 1 at a 
at p minus 1 degrees of freedom for a level of significance from chi square tables and in case if nr square is greater than this chi square that critical value of chi square that is when nr square is greater than this critical value of chi square at for p minus 1 degrees of freedom and and, and at a level of significance you will be rejecting null hypothesis so you reject the hypothesis of homoscedasticity in favor of heteroscedasticity okay okay